this is a working replica of a Tudor cannon copied from an original gun recovered from the wreck of the Mary Rose. Like many medieval siege cannon, it's made of wrought iron, and like both earlier and later field guns, it's mounted on a carriage with two large wheels to allow it to be moved around easily on land. It's not adapted for use at sea, so how effective was it? The gun was a breech loader, and the wrought iron breech block was first loaded with gunpowder. At this first firing, the amount of powder was very much a matter of guesswork. The breech block was a very innovative development when it was first introduced in the early 15th century. Rather than load the gun with powder and shot down the barrel, as had been traditional, breech blocks allowed the gun to be loaded at the other, safer end of the gun. Several could also be loaded in advance and rapidly reloaded during action, giving a faster rate of fire. The breech block was packed with sawdust and a hay wadding before the end was sealed with a wooden bung. Next, an original stone ball from the Mary Rose was to be fired directly at the thick wooden timbers. The target was based on the design of a Tudor ship's side. How would an old-fashioned wrought iron cannon perform against a much more difficult target, solid oak? The result was far more impressive than we'd thought possible. Oh, my word! At last, the gun is finished. Mounted on a replica carriage made by specialist carpenter Jim Sadler, it's ready for its big test. It's intended to fire a solid cast iron ball. The first loading begins. The range we're using at Shubriness on the Essex marshes witnessed many important artillery trials during the 19th century, when rifled artillery was replacing smoothbore guns descended from the cannon we're about to test. When you're ready. We're trying to find out how well the bronze muzzle loader performs compared with the wrought iron breech loader that we fired previously. Put in your shots. Put up your shots. Every care is taken. The safest way to load the gun is as it would have been done in Tudor times, and that's what we try to do. The first test firing uses a small charge. We'll build up the power gradually by using bigger charges. The first shot is fired. The gun has passed its initial test. Even with a small charge, the power unleashed from the gun is awesome. Filmed by a high-speed camera that turns a second into a minute, the ferocity of the explosion can be seen in all its terror as smoke and flame belch from the gun and throw the ball at enormous speed. The next shot, too, was comparatively low in power, but it punched a neat hole through the thick oak of the replica ship's side. Well, it looks like somebody's got a drill and bored it through. It's an amazing clean hole. Oh, it's yeah. fantastic. I'm delighted we've hit the target. Further tests showed the true power of this weapon. It could propel an iron ball at supersonic speeds to well over a mile. No ship and no sailor was safe from a weapon like this. It was the innovation in gun and ship design that occurred in the reign of Henry VIII that was to lead to the rapid expansion of European influence in the world.